At 9am on the 7th of November 1859, the town council walked up through Castle Douglas to greet the first train to arrive at the new train station. The train arrived to the sounds of the Gatehouse of Fleet Band. It was the beginning of a new era in the town's history. It was initially the terminus of a branch line from Dumfries, but a mere two years later, the town council and crowds of local folk were there to greet the arrival of the first train from Stranraer along the Port Patrick line. The route from Dumfries went via Killiwan station by Beeswing and then through Kurgunyan and then Dalbiti before more or less following the River Ur west before crossing the Ur. In fact, the bridge over the Ur had to be built twice as the first single track bridge was washed away. It was replaced by a viaduct so sturdy in construction it later took contractors four months to demolish after the Port Patrick line was closed. The route for the Port Patrick line had originally been intended to go along the coast via Kirkcubri, but as soon as the decision was made to turn the line north into the Glen Kens instead, a campaign was begun to open a branch line from Castle Douglas to Kirkcubri. Before that line opened, a dispute arose between the Port Patrick Railway Company and the new Kirkcubri railway line about the use of part of that line. A compromise was reached, but then the railway inspector refused to pass the new junction that was built for passenger trains. The solution was to build a second railway station, a wooden station where the Kukubri line passed under Abercrombie Road as a temporary measure and to coach passengers from the top of the town down to the new station to make the connection to Kukubri. That station was called St Andrew's Station and it opened in 1864. It closed again in 1867 when the issues with the junction were fully resolved. There was no doubt the railways helped Castle Douglas prosper, but some were still sceptical. One local landowner claimed that the rail would only be useful for carrying lunatics to the Crichton. Many landowners though were happy enough to be paid a flat rate for the land used in the railway and they were rewarded when the mart began to prosper and grow in reputation, becoming regarded as one of Scotland's premier cattle markets. S.R. Crockett, the author, saw a great deal of the changes brought to Castle Douglas by the rails. He wrote, In my own time, life centred around the cross, the town clock, and so continued during all my life as a schoolboy. But ever since, contrary to all the laws of gravitation, the town has been running faster and faster uphill, apparently to get a sniff of the cattle marts on Monday and to see the white smoke of the trains. The new line, before it was doubled to take up the increasing traffic, was single tracked and required a staff given out on a ticket based system to switch points and allow passage. An incident occurred in 1874 when a ballast train with the staff collided with a goods train to Stranraer that had tried to jump the queue for a ticket. Three were killed and locals ferried the injured away from the wreckage. The line was not cleared for several days during which passengers had to get out on one side of the wreckage, walk past it on foot and board a new train on the other side. While the 50-year jubilee of the Port Patrick line was celebrated with fireworks and pageantry, the station at Castle Douglas and the line from Dumfries to Stranraer as well as the branch line to Kirkcubri were closed in 1965 due to the beaching cuts.